May is National Horror Movie Education Month. Stick around after the review. I'm giving this special edition Halloween 3 DVD away to a winner who can answer some horror trivia correctly. But first, we're going to head over to the theater and take a look at Final Exam. Final Exam is an earnest attempt by another one-off indie distributor to both replicate and remodel the groundwork laid by John Carpenter's Halloween. It is by no means a smashing success, but it does boast an entertainment value that most films of this timidity do not. It begins with a spin on a newly established genre rule. It reduces the prior tragedy to the prior incident. Can't we go no, I'm not going to be scared off by a bunch of frustrated jobs. Final Exam is perhaps one of the most direct examples of how Halloween loomed over the genre. It widely commercialized the motiveless killer on a familiar setting made ominous through implied dangers and tricky camera moves. And while the choreography might make the implications of violence a little more implicit, the film is very sparse on gratuitous violent effects. As we explore the differences between Halloween and Final Exam, consider this. Final Exam exploits a festivity that takes place regularly on an ordinary setting, and to exploit this material to the maximum, the film identifies with the event, not the motive, making the motive the event, making it scarier. The problem is, it's kind of hard to put a laugh track to Halloween. The same is not true of Final Exam, which I will illustrate soon. Final Exam is another shining example of the subconscious intellectual paranoia of the Reagan era. But I have to make an 82 on this exam to pass the course. And if I don't pass the course, my parents stop making the payments on my car. The fear of losing your backing and the idea of an ever-present threat of punishment for stepping out of line. Chemistry for morons. No offense. Now, before I get into any more real heavy-duty commentary about the educational value of horror movies, I want to illustrate to you how Final Exam ultimately fails to achieve greatness in the most entertaining way possible. Stop it, Radish. It's not funny. I mean it. Come on, you scared me to death. Final Exam is also an excellent argument for the idea that most of the people arguing for the banning of horror films weren't exactly watching them. The universal argument that women are depicted as victims and exploited for being weaker is ludicrous. In almost all of these films, the majority of violence depicted on screen is done to a man by a man. Look. Here comes another one. Look how stupid and weak they are. You guys have really done it this time. And here's another one. And he's gonna get it too. This one isn't going to save her either. The girl always saves herself. Final Exam could pose the argument that the stupidity of men was being exploited in order to bang out slasher film after slasher film. While Final Exam has so much potential, 
I cannot allow my personal adoration to cloud my judgment in giving an honest rating for the layman. This registers no higher than two slashes out of five. Now, remember, I love all of these films, so that's still a good rating. But this film is strictly for the completists, collectors, and intellectuals, but not universally appealing across the board. And now, for tonight's trivia question. Actor Joel Rice, the dead kid in the doorway, also appeared in another horror film. Not so much a horror film per se, but more like a documentary slash compilation, which was hosted by Donald Pleasance. Tell me the name of this film by sending me a message through Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, and then on Tuesday, May 26th, I will draw a winner from the correct answers, and that winner will receive the special edition Halloween 3 DVD through the mail. I'm Chaz Klimchak. This is Klimchak's Killer Collection. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Actually, Sheriff, he didn't kill anybody. I mean, it was, uh, it was just a joke. <laughs> well, there's about 50 laws that he did break, one of which was getting me to ride all the way out here for nothing. But I guess I could run this bird in on that one. Well, I'm sure nobody meant any harm. I mean, uh, sometimes <laughs> students just have to let off a little steam. Ah. Uh, Hello there, Quentin. Get yourself some criminals here. Didn't you hear about that multiple shooting? Did these guys do it? I thought it was pretty funny myself, didn't you? Bulldog Hound was in on it. But you know I think I'm going to take them all in. Maybe bust a few heads. Now, nah, Quentin, that don't sound like you. You used to enjoy a good time until you got so full of yourself. That's a little different. But now I do remember a time when the library caught on fire. And somebody hit the fire hose from the fire department. You guys sit around drinking beer all night, chin. Damn good fire doing blaze burn something around. Oh, now you think that's funny, though. When you think that's funny. Well, we'll just see. Because one of these days you boys are gonna be in trouble and I am gonna be there to take you home. These boys are looking at a bad end. But last year a girl killed herself because a sorority wouldn't accept her. Which sorority? She jumped from the top of her building's tower to six floors. Well, I bet it made them feel terrible. That's the point, Janet. It doesn't matter how bad they felt. Stop it, Radish. It's not funny.